So today we're starting with the ELAC ARB51 active stand mount loudspeaker. We can stream to these, but I'm not doing that today because I'm bypassing their internal DACs to do something completely different. So in my rack here, I've got a core Dave fed by an Aurelic Aries Mini. I could stream the Dave's balanced outputs into the balanced inputs of the ELAC, but I'm not doing that. I'm using the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge. And the reason I'm using the bridge is because it has a analog input that doubles as a phono input for my turntable here. So it's a DAC, but it's also a preamplifier. So it's got a volume control like the Dave, but it has analog inputs. So the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge is an all-in-one that goes analog out into these speakers. And for me, both of these DACs going into these speakers sound better than the internal streaming module. And Occam's Razor tells us that we need nothing more than a DAC with a volume control and a pair of active speakers like this. But is that always the case? Is this the best sounding combination? Or does a detour for the signal bring us something better? Let's find out. So this is the Freya Plus from Shit Audio in California. It's an all analog preamplifier, no streaming, no phono staging, just source selection, volume control, plus some other things that we'll get to. So what I've done here is I've inserted this in the playback chain between the Brooklyn Bridge and the ELAC speakers. So this is acting as an interpreter between the source and the speakers. And so the Brooklyn Bridge is connected here on the back. I've also connected my turntable output here. That's coming from a gold note phono stage, which is tucked in here behind me. And then I'm going balanced out into the speakers. So we've got two balanced inputs here, three single ended inputs, balanced outputs, single ended outputs. So all possibilities are covered by this preamplifier. This clicking sound is the sound of a 128 stepped relay attenuator. Perfectly normal, nothing to worry about. This is how it sounds. And it also sounds like that when you change the volume with the remote control. And then we have a source selection switch on the front here. So five inputs. I can turn this all day. So the really interesting thing about this shit preamp is it has three modes of operation. So it has a passive mode, it has an active mode, both unity gain, and then also, it's kind of obvious really, it has a tube mode, which gives us 12 dB of extra gain. Once we engage the tubes, this light flashes, and these take time to warm up before they're engaged and before they let music through. So we have three different ways of running it, and interestingly, we have three different sonic flavors, three different colors. Flavors or colors? Yeah, I guess we're talking about color. Three different colors. So in determining the nature of how the Freya colors the sound and in each of its modes, obviously I have the Brooklyn Bridge as my source running Rune. And so that I can share the music I listen to with you guys, I made a Spotify playlist I'll put it in the description box below. There will also be Kobos and Tidal versions. So there's like Massive Attack, Orbital, Smog, Thomas Dolby, Luna, Leonard Cohen, Monolake. And obviously I didn't just use these as Spotify into the Brooklyn Bridge, even though the Brooklyn Bridge can do that. I have lossless versions streamed through Rune. So that's the music I used for this review. You can listen to it if you click the links in the description box below. So we might think that a preamplifier is only about source selection and volume control. But 
A preamplifier can also change the sound of our system. And that's why I'm talking about color. Because if I go MyTech direct into these ELAC speakers, I get a very fast, very quick silvery sound, but sometimes it's a bit thin. Whereas if I put the shit in between the MyTech and the ELACs and run it just in the passive volume control mode, we trade in a little bit of that quick silveriness for a little bit more mid-range body, just a smidge, but we also get a reduction in the, the sort of sense of speed of music. The, the shit preamp just slows things down just a touch, just a bit. Now staying with solid state operation, if I then click the Freya Plus over into its active mode, so where it has a buffer, we get a slight change in sound again, you might call it color, um, where we get a bit more body to the music, it has a bit more punch. This is compared to going DAC direct. And this is especially useful if you're used to playing at lower volumes. That extra body and punch really comes into its own just if you just don't want to crank it all the time. Now where things get really interesting with this preamp is when we engage the tube stage. So we click this preamp mode button again, the tubes are engaged. Again, they take a bit of time for the circuit to be activated. They have to be warmed up. I think there's some kind of control inside that ensures that they are properly heated before music starts to flow. And what we get is quite interesting with this stock quad of six SN7 tubes. We don't get a fat buttery sound. These aren't that kind of tube. But what we do get is a more delicate, finessed top end. So we get more shimmer. We get a better sense of the rasp of horns. It's clicking because it's just activating. Um, we also get what I call vapor trail. So the kind of more obvious vapor trail on the smaller details in the mix. So everything sounds a bit more alive. And yes, I know there's two extra 12 dB of gain. We have to take it down if we're gonna do a level match comparison. But I've been listening to this thing for weeks and weeks and weeks. I've been living with it. I don't just take delivery, unbox it, hook it up, click, 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 listen, 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 done. No, I unbox it and I live with this for several weeks. So that's how I've managed to discern that by far my favorite operational mode of this preamp is with the tubes engaged. I think they add far more color, but pleasurable color. I'm not so sure about the, the first two modes, whether they make enough of a difference to justify buying this for these ELACs, but the tube stage, absolutely, most definitely. If you want color, if you want extra, an extra something, if you want a different sound, if you want something that's a bit more full bodied, if you want more silky smoothness to your top end, then adding this particular preamp with these particular tubes will give you that. So why does that finesse, that shimmer, that delicacy that the Freya brings to the table, why does that matter to the MyTech DAC? Well, the MyTech has its roots in the pro audio world. It's a very clean, very neutral sounding DAC. And I don't mean neutrality in the sense of I know what the recording studio sound was because I don't, but it's like it, it seems like it's a very neutral sounding DAC. And it can be a bit cool. And also the bridge, the streaming board in this can sometimes add a little bit of glare to things like Fortet where there's a lot of percussion and bells and chimes. So the Freya just colors that to make it sound more pleasurable, um, less edgy, less, less of that sort of what I call top lip glare that sometimes the streaming board in this has. So the Freya here adds color to the MyTag. And really for me, I mean, that's what being into hi-fi is all about, is finding the right color that you enjoy the most. And that may not be the same color that I enjoy the most, but this notion of trying to chase one ideal goal, one absolute sound, I think is a bit of a nonsense really, because everybody has different tastes in food, in wine, in books, in interior decoration, in the colors of their walls. So 
why would they not have different taste in the color of sound that comes out of their speakers? They do. And we should also acknowledge that some people will prefer the sound of the MyTech direct into the Elax. Some people like that fast, zippy, quicksilvery sound. I prefer it with the shit in the chain, but I, we also have to acknowledge that that's another box, another power cable, more interconnects, more fuss, more visual intrusion. So you have to find also the right balance for you between the color you like and how many boxes you have in your rack, if you have a rack at all. I mean, one of the beauties of these Elac speakers is that you can stream them directly and you don't need a rack. So I realize the irony of piling in an extra DAC and then an extra preamp. My role here is to share with you the findings from my asking, what if? What if we add a preamp in between a DAC that already has a volume control and an active loudspeaker? What does that give us? No, there's nothing. There's no extra noise or hiss or hum introduced by the shit preamp, which I think is a huge surprise given there are tubes in the circuit right now. No, there's no hiss, no hum, no. Bizarre. However, the biggest downside with this piece of shit is that the tubes are highly microphonic. So if we tap the chassis, or the volume control or the cables connecting the back, we get noise through the speakers. Which is not ideal, but this is something to be aware of with this Freya Plus. So maybe it's the tubes that need rolling out or maybe they need tube rings on them. But anyway, there's some microphony going on here. Just be aware of it. So this is the key three, like the ELAC, I've reviewed this before. This is a much more expensive speaker than the ELAC, but it's also much more resolving. It goes lower. I think it's treble extension seems to be better, subjectively speaking. But this has DSP inside that we cannot get around. So even when we connect an XLR analog input to the back, it still sees digitization upon entry is processed for all the kind of room compensation that this speaker does and then goes through DAX and comes out of the drivers here. And we can attenuate any, any line level XLR input using this, the key remote, it says XLR here, volume up and down here. It may sound completely illogical to add the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge, its balanced output, to the balanced input here and use its volume control. Not only because there's a DAC in the Brooklyn Bridge and a DAC in here, so we're double DACing, but also because I think both of these brands and their devices lean towards that very kind of clean, highly transparent, highly resolving, detailed sound. But if we do as we did with the Elax, if we put the Freya in between the Brooklyn Bridge and this speaker's XLR input, again, something interesting happens. So the shit makes the bass a little bit looser on the key threes, which then makes these speakers sound less uptight, less of an analytical tool, and more of a sort of easygoing, relaxed, um, <laughs> what's the word? Um, but back with Orbital, the shit makes the key sound a bit looser in the bass, so it's not quite as robustly tight. It's not quite as muscular, which I think is a good thing for when you're listening at home and you want something a little bit more relaxed that you can sink into, even though Orbital isn't really the music you would normally sink into. But there we go, yeah.
Now I'm talking about the tube stage here, the tube output of this preamp. I don't think it's worth adding the Freya to the key three just for additional color if we're using its solid state outputs. I mean, the only reason you would do that is to add a phono stage and a DAC of your choice or a streamer of your choice or that kind of thing. If you want to have multiple sources playing into the key three, you're gonna need a preamp. I hear no audible erosion from these solid state outputs. It's just they don't really add very much color or well, certainly not as much as the tube output stage. So again, we're talking about color, subjectivity, what I like. I mean, I like these little finesse bits and I guess a, a slightly richer sound. I love these speakers. I think they're highly, highly accomplished in their design and what they do, but that doesn't mean that they cannot be ameliorated to sound subjectively more pleasing in another direction. So with the shit in the chain, we lose a little bit of the, the key three's ultra specific player outline drawing. So it's a bit softer. But on balance, that's probably a good thing for crappier recordings like Smog or some of the Secret Machines tracks in my playlist. And what we get instead is more finesse and more delicacy, which when I'm playing the sort of Velvet Underground relaxed strum of Luna, I want more of a relaxed vibe and the shit gives me that. It's not quite as uptight as the keys running on their own. So that the color that the shit adds is more subjectively pleasurable for the kind of music that I like to run through the key threes. So this video isn't just about the shit Freya Plus, it's about color and it's about introducing color to your hi-fi system so that it makes it more enjoyable for you. So I know now that the Freya's tube stage inserted between a DAC and an active loudspeaker makes the music that I like more enjoyable to listen to. Now that's not just one color, it could be many different colors depending upon the tubes that we change out in the preamp here. Sometimes people call changing tubes tube rolling. So if we roll in a different set, we'll get a different sound, different color, and that may be more your taste than mine. I don't really like the kind of the big, fat, rich, buttery, chunky sounding tubes, but that's my taste and your taste will be different. So one's taste in color is not only mood dependent or music dependent, it's you dependent. You decide what you like. I'm giving an example here of a tube stage that I particularly enjoy. That is not the end of the story. This is just the beginning of the story, really. It's now it's up to you to go out there and find something that you might like. And if you're wondering where all the comparisons are, I have one question for you. How many preamps with three different output options do you know of that sell for under a grand? If you like this video, if it helps you in any way better understand the complexities of the audio world and signal routing and color and subjective enjoyment, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my attitude towards high-end audio, where I'm not afraid of a bit of extra color, that's why I like vinyl sometimes, it colors the sound, um, then please do subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And we're out. <laughs>